Welcome back to the Loner Ranger Radio Show. My name is Bruce Woodburn, and I am the Loner Ranger. Today, I've got one of my very special guests and great friend, Cleve Loveland, from Loveland Properties with me. Uh, Cleve and I host another radio show on another network, and um, uh, we always invite you to tune in to listen to us. Also, we are on iHeartRadio together, Spotify, and we have a great YouTube channel if you miss us. You can always reach me at the station at 407-706-3313, 407-706-3313, or go to webringyouhome.com. Welcome, Cleve Loveland of Loveland Properties. Great to have you here. Thanks, Bruce. Um, great to be on. I just, it's been, this has kind of been a crazy first part of the year. You know, last year, interest rates dropped, sales were Big, despite COVID having everybody, um, people locked down and in the pandemic, um, sales were still out of control. The inventory got chewed up. And beginning in January, I started taking like multiple, I put houses out for bid. And right. instead of instead of taking the first couple offers through in the first two days, um, I would put things out for four or five days. I call it my market maker system. And inventories, literally, I got the inventory numbers here. One thing our Orlando Board of Realtors does is gives, gives us great stats on what's happening. And inventory for single-family homes is below 3,000. It hasn't been that low since 2005. What's, what, what would a typical market be like? We've been hovering around 8,000 for about four years. Our four-year average is probably like 8,000 homes for sale, about a two-and-a-half-month supply, right. which is a seller's market. Anything below a six-month supply is a seller's market where you should see slight right. appreciation. You get more than six months, you're into a buyer's yep. market. And and the one thing about this is what's different is, you know, everybody asks, is this a bubble? And, and, and it's not. We don't have bad lending. We don't have what we have now. I mean, the builders are what broke our back in 2009 or 2007 delivering all those homes. And they were for people that thought they were going to flip them, but there was nobody to buy them. And right now we've got, we've got ultra, ultra low supply and the builders can't deliver. They, had, they don't have any right. lumber. Um, their prices are going up. We've got people, I think, coming to Florida. Florida's moving up. We, you and I talked about this. Florida being, we were like 20th as most expensive state in the union. Right. We're going to move up to number 15, 16. And I think it's just, and I think COVID just made it a little more obvious. People saw that our tax structure is great. Our weather's great. Um, we don't have an Our governor's great. Uh, we don't have an oppressive government um, telling us what we can and can't do. And I think that's kind of amplified it. So we're getting a little more expensive. But but still, 90% of what I sell is is Floridians buying homes. It's not, you know, half of it's New Yorkers. I mean, I see some of that coming in. But 90% of the time, it's somebody else in Central Florida. They thought they were going to move in a couple years, but all of a sudden they can. They're like, oh, wow, our house is worth an extra 30, 40 grand. Let's put that down. We're still going to get a four, you know, a 3% interest rate and, and something in the threes and or better maybe. And it's just fueling this nice market. And, and we've got enough demand out there. It's going to last us a while, but people still don't go crazy. Well, you know, it's funny because you you specialize in listings. I know you have a great buyers team. Mm -hmm. You got a great buyers team. They work work with your buyers. Uh, I close a lot of transactions with your team, but you specialize in helping people get the most money and help them understand how to position their home to sell so that they can get the most money for it. But when you're entertaining an offer. Okay, aside, and I know you love using my fast track program, but yep. when you're entertaining offers, and what are you looking for to be able to choose the buyer? Let's just say you got a listing, you got, you just, you have five offers on yeah. it. What are you looking for? What do you, what are your steps and what could an agent that's working with a buyer learn from this program on how to position themselves to become higher up in the winning offer? Well, what I'll see is usually a lack of responsiveness from the other agent. Like I'll have a bunch of offers and I can look at the price and I can tell if they, sometimes they won't send the pre-approval letter or a fast track letter if it's coming from you. And I'm like, I need this basic info. And like, if the agent can't put together an offer like that, how's the rest of the transaction going to be? If they can't put together a complete offer. Um, if they So first things first, I just want to dissect this yep. so that our listeners can understand that. So the first thing you're telling me is that several offers aren't even really prepared well. I'd say two-thirds of the offers that come to me don't have all the documents with them. Which you wouldn't even entertain an offer if it didn't have a pre-approval letter attached to it. I, I wouldn't, and, and I don't want to do my seller a disservice because that buyer may be the one willing to pay the most for the house or give the best terms. But sometimes it just kind of indicates to me, like, and then when I email people and ask them, saying, hey, where's your pre-approval? And they send me something from you know, a, a credit union in Spokane, Washington. Right. I'm like, rut row. 
you know, yeah. that's probably not our guy. Whereas if I got a fast track letter from you, and maybe that offer wasn't even the best price, but I can go back and see. And I'm looking for what's and, – and also, you know, who's putting – you know, who's not worried about the appraisal so much? You know, they'll pay a couple thousand over appraisal. And that's, and, and that's the other thing. Let me say about this market. This isn't like the bubble. I had people paying on $300,000 homes. I'd have people come in and go, I'll pay three fifty. dollars I'll pay three forty. dollars um, In this market, I'm getting about 2 or 3% more than list price on most things. I don't see people that's go crazy. That's not huge. It's though. not huge. And, and, and it's funny because when I had my market maker system, when I left stuff out for bid for seven days, I'd have people pull their offers back. You know, the right. market, other stuff would pop up and they'd go on, you know, so four or five days is the right time that I percolate, you know, I let, I let it cook right. and sit it there. Whereas one or two days, I might not get all the offers and I might get the couple that's, they're both doctors and they can't get free except, you know, until the weekend, whatever it might be. But I watch and see what are the people saying. And, but my job, you know, when I list a house, I want to make sure the offer that comes in, I, I've got all the documentation. If I've got, if it's like pulling teeth, just trying to get the agent on the phone or get them to respond sure. to an email. You know, and believe it or not, you know, and there's still always the offers that come in from the investment companies and they're just, you know, they send you something for 66% of list price. And that's your, that's your, your doormat, um, your offer doors. And well, your, you're not you know, going kind of to, your, your doormat, the iPad, yeah. the iBuyers, <laughs> iBuyers are not going to give you're you. You're very gonna, convincing commercials, but I got to tell you something, you're not 60- going to get, and now I'm hearing this other Mark Spain or something on, on TV, but they're not, listen, if somebody's going to pay you cash, waive the appraisal, they're not going to give you full value. And they'll Why do it without even coming to look at it. Yeah, you know, but that's going to be sixty percent or fifty percent. But if you're tr- yeah. listen, if if money is important to you, then hire somebody like Cleve. You can reach him at 407-352-8118, 407-352-8118. Cleve Loveland Loveland Properties. I also preview Cleve as one of my VIP real estate agents on my website. Go to webringyouhome.com. That's we bring you home.com or contact me. I'll always pass you on to Cleve. Uh, he's a great real estate source, really good at helping you identify what you need to do and keep you from spending a lot of money on fixing stuff that doesn't need to be fixed. Uh, and you can just call me at 407-706-3313 and we'll guide you in the right direction. How much so time we got? We've got about, uh, we got about two minutes okay. and 15 seconds. All right. Now, I just want to, I mean, the other thing too is getting a house ready for sale. And this is what's important. Um, I have a 50 point checklist we go through. And I, and I, and I think the main thing, my rule of thumb is usually around one to 3% of the sales price of the home. And you can't believe how many people I've stopped Bruce from doing the entire new kitchen. Right. You know, and especially in a market like I this. I wouldn't want to sell this house for this kitchen. And they you're like, to, just sell yeah, the house. Yeah, but they need to keep that money for the next home. Because sure they'll have do. more choices than that. Because I've had some people Because you won't get 100% of your investment back out of it. Mm-hmm. Although you do recommend that you you pay attention to the kitchen and the bathrooms. It's it's paint. It's carpet. It's flooring. It's the front yard and leading up to the front door. I mean, I had a house the other day. We're going to get a lot of offers on it. The yard was dead. We spent $1,000 on sod in the front yard. We're not going to do the backyard because once they're in, the inside of the house is nice. We're not worried about the backyard. That's why I but, don't iron the back of my shirt because I've already seen you. I'm walking <laughs> in the other direction, okay? Just iron the front. That's funny. That's funny. I got some articles here from Nationwide um, talking about how home buying is slowing down, but mainly it's slowing down because number of mortgage applications I think is down too. It's slowing down because there's nothing to buy. Right. You know, and the builders can't. Well, build. and refinances are starting to slow down. You're yeah. seeing people that, you know, took advantage of refinances when they were in the twos. Now they're in the threes. Yep. Some some rates are still in the twos, but it's it's, uh, you know, the the days of the lowest possible rate are in our rearview mirror. Uh, but if you haven't refinanced yet, it's still a great opportunity. I, I mean, somebody, interest rates are still unbelievable. I had somebody call you the other day. We did our client movie night and this. Lady walked I've up got, to me and said, I've she, got a couple she was of your fives. She was in the fives. Yeah. I'm like, well, where have you been? I'm like, I don't know. Ask. You know, I, it's, a, it's unbelievable how many people just have put this on the wayside. 407 706 3313. That's 407 706 3313. I am the loan arranger. You can visit my website at webringyouhome.com. We'll be back in five minutes with more of the loan arranger radio show and my guest, Cleve Loveland. We'll be back in five. 